and welcome to the Player YouTube channel where, amongst other things, we do car reviews, but not car reviews that you're probably used to. We kind of try and tell you it's straight. We don't flap around with fake vents and scratchy plastics, and I am definitely not going to tell you how many bottles I can get in my door bins. So don't worry, we're going to give it to you straight, and hopefully at the end of the review you can make your mind up whether you want to go down and get a test drive of the car that we are reviewing. Simple as, well, that's the plan anyway. Today's car, believe it or not, is the Skoda Superb 2-litre TDI Estate. And it really is superb, I've got to say that. In actual fact, I'm going to go as far as saying I think this could be the best estate car of all time. <gasps> there you go, I've said it. But I want to show you around it and I want to prove to you how great this car really is. The Superb gets its name from the Latin superbus, which means proud or stately. And rightly so, a car like this has been around since 1934. It's got its fourth generation clogs on, so to speak. It's a pretty amazing bit of kit. Most of it, as you probably are aware, comes from the Volkswagen stable. So you get a lot of symmetry between the two companies. However, I think this car has a lovely little standalone niche market all of its own that you, know, you really can't beat. Let's get it back to player HQ. As I said, let's get around it, let's get underneath it, and give you our opinion of the new Skoda Superb 2-litre TDI estate. First up, you've got to admit, it's a good looking car, isn't it? It's very um, BMW 5 Series Touring, I don't know. Are you getting that vibe? I don't, definitely. Love the lines on this. Before we start having a look around the car, check this out. I only noticed it there a few minutes ago. In the door here, you get an umbrella. Look at that. I mean, I've only really seen that on Rolls Royces and you know, cars of that sort of caliber. That's really cool, I love it. That just pops neatly back in the door there. Um, also, another little quirky bit in the back here, you get inside the filler cap, an ice scraper. So during those dark winter months, if you need to scrape your, it's perfect, isn't it? Even the horse agrees with me over there. I'm gonna bung that back in there. I mean. Just generally, this car, uh, being the Sportline Plus, it gets 15 millimeter lower suspension. And I think with the 19 inch additional alloys, they're an extra, it just looks peachy, doesn't it? A little bit dirty, because we've been road testing it. Have to test it properly for you. Another thing you're gonna notice with this, all the chrome's been taken out. It's all blacked, blacked out. Black badges, no chrome. I think it just looks peachy, doesn't it? And I love these 19 inch alloys. Up front, standard, with all superbs, you get LED headlights. You've got this new, much lower, more aggressive bumper section here, same at the back as well. Um, and then you've got this really lovely grille. And I love this, the whole look of the car. Um, this car in the metallic black is, is also really nice, but there are eight colors to choose from. Anyway, enough of that. Let's find out the choices under the bonnet. Bonnet release catch down here in the driver's footwell. Single pull, don't forget, it's left hand drive, they're not gonna move it, it's gonna be in the passenger footwell. Bear that in mind. The actual catch for the bonnet is right dead centre here. Just pull it back towards you that way and you can release it. Nice gas struts on this. Well, give them a little push, there you go, doing their job. Um, that's a very heavy bonnet as well. All of the Skoda Superb engines are four cylinder jobbies, as I like to call them. Um, you have a number of choices though. A, definite number of choices on this. We're going to start with the petrol variants. So you've got a 1.5 litre petrol, develops around about 148 brake horsepower. I think that's going to be sort of your lower end market if you can't really afford to go for anything else. Because honestly, I'd be jumping into the two litre petrol range. There's two two litre petrols. You've got one that's 187 brake horsepower. And again, a good engine, nothing wrong with it at all. But the one I really like is the um, 100, uh, sorry, 276 brake horsepower. That's a two litre, uh, two litre petrol, as I said. And it will give you a naught to 60 time of about 5.2 seconds. Can you imagine this car? It also comes with all wheel drive. Yes, so that to me is probably what I'd be going for if I was buying this car. However, there's a couple of diesel options as well. So you've got a 148 horsepower, two litre diesel engine, 
that's all right as well. It's okay. But if you were going to plump for the diesel, I think I'd go for the 197 brake horsepower diesel. And that will give you 56 miles to the gallon. See, again, you're suffering a little bit on one side, but you're gaining on the other. Swings and roundabouts, as my old dad used to say. A couple of gearbox choices. Six-speed manual, probably wouldn't bother with it. Maybe on the 1.5 litre petrol. Um, I'd go for the DSG, the seven-speed DSG that this car's got. Simply stunning gearbox, absolutely love it. Um, and all in all, that, well, there you have it. That's, that's your engine choices and your gearbox choices. Let's check out round the back here. And you've got to admit, again, look at the styling on this car. How nice is that? This is an estate car, but look at it. So cool. I love the air on the top here. It's got the built-in brake light there. Not only does this help with the economy on the car by giving it more downforce, it helps with the performance. And at the same time, it helps by keeping this rear screen as clean as possible with all the muck shooting over the back there. However, if you do get a dirty rear screen, you've got a nice little uh, wash wipe there as well. It's an infinity screen or um, a fluty screen as I like to call them. So there's no sort of horrible rubbers all the way around here. It just sort of sits nicely in its own space. And you'll notice as well, it's got privacy glass all the way around at the back. Really nice little touch, especially in the summer, keeps it cooler. Blacked out badges over there, love that, nice little touch. I did say I'm not gonna mention fake vents, so I won't, but they do look nice, I like them. Let's check out inside. It's got an assisted tail lift, there you go. Um, pops up there, 660 litres. It is huge, absolutely dry huge. Now, one of the things I love about this car, it has an extra on it. <laughs> It's an appendage extra. I love this. So across here you have a scuff guard, which is really nice. And it and I love things like that because when you're putting a pram in here or a bike or something, you're not going to scratch all your plastic here. Oh, I said scratchy plastics. No, I didn't. I said scratch your plastic. So careful. If you look here, this one is loose, and I wondered what it was. And I'm looking at it, and suddenly I went like that, and I went and did you see that? You got to look at that again. It's so cool. Watch this. Ready? So you pull it there, ready? Three, two, one. Oh, <laughs> that's like a proper night out, isn't it? And then, there you go, look at that tow bar. Tow bar is hidden away there, but no electronics. It's just on like a cable, you just pull it. I think that's super cool. And then when you want to put it away, oh dear, yeah. <laughs> I remember those days. Right, let's pop it back up there. That, I think, is a very, very useful accessory because I'm not saying caravanners, you know, yeah, I'm not. I'm not going down that route. It could be for anything. You never know when you need a tow bar. If you're going to try and help someone out of a ditch or you're going to tow someone along, very, very handy. Um, what's not handy is the parcel shelf. It's very luxurious, really, really nice. Um, and it does cover up that 660 litres. Let's talk about 660 litres here. It's a huge boot. And it does come out um, and it's really nice. I'm going to pop it out. It's on clips either side and you can just slide it. It's quite heavy. Now, this is not going to disappear under there. So unfortunately, if you're out and you've got to put stuff in here, it's going to end up on your passenger's laps or across the back seat there because it just doesn't go underneath. So I'm going to put it around the side. I know what you're saying. AJ, you normally throw those away. You throw them away and we enjoy it when they go flying over the... Do you know how much they cost? And do you know how much Skoda will charge me if I break that? So I'm just going to make sure it doesn't scratch the paintwork. There we go. So it's nicely out the way over there. Unfortunately, you, you can't hide it under here. But what is hidden under here, this is one of the best bits, I love this. Check this out. We have not only a spare wheel, it's a full size spare wheel. It's, it's a proper wheel. It's one of those, but in here. How amazing is that? None of those stupid puncher repair outfits, you know, with the pump and the latex and you're on the side of the road trying to get it all pushed. This is a jack. It's got a little, you know, wheel brace thing that you could, and you could jack the car up and change it. I could do this in 10 minutes, you know, flapping around with all that stupid stuff. Skoda, I love you. That's the way to go. Put a spare wheel in the car. Even a space saver is fine, you know, or run flats. That's the only other way. Versatility in this car, practicality. It goes beyond the limits. Check this out. One this side, look at that. Loads of space to put stuff in there. Same again over here. Another one over there. Bosch, like that. Love it. You've got shopping bag holders either side. One there. One there. You've got a 12 volt adapter here as well for blowing up your inflatables. Or if you've got a puncture and you do need to pump the in. It's there. It's there. You've got the 12 volt adapter. Here comes the best bit. On some of these cars, if you're lucky, you can have this bit is a, is a pull. It's like a latch and it will release the seats there. Now it's a 60-40 split on the seats. Unfortunately on this car, it doesn't have that little latch. So I've got to go around, so stay there, bear with me. 
It's quite easy though. It's got a little latch on the top there like that. Pull that down there. I'm going to pull this one round here. I'm going to go backwards for you. Ready? Here we go. And what fell out? <laughs> Something fell out. Anyway, we'll worry about that in a minute. It's probably the cameraman's tea bags. Um, 1,950 litres. I've just noticed what it was, but we'll talk about that another time. 1,950 litres. That's huge, massive, humongous. Watch, I'll show you how big it is. Ready? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I'll keep going. Look at this. Now, I figured out, right, I'm gonna come and talk to you back there. It's so big, I'm actually gonna come back here and talk to you. I figured out, if you love fishing or sort of outdoor sports or anything like that, what a perfect weekend car. Not only can you sleep in here, you could have your little stove and things set up here. If you were a fisherman, you could have your fishing rod, look, here, you're covered. You've got your bed, you've got your food. This is just the ultimate estate car. If you need space and you want to ship a few kids about or, you know, got some friends that you need to go out with, this has to be the perfect car. Just look at the amount of room you get in the back here. I've also noticed these doors go right the way back and the size of these windows are perfect. If you've got kids that suffer from car sickness, this is the car to go for because a big window that's low down like that, absolutely perfect. And these go all the way down as well, which is really nice. You've got a lovely Alcantara finish on this car, but that is part of the Sportline Plus package. So do bear that in mind. This is not entry level. Um, let's jump in and have a look. Um, first up, before I do jump in, recessed seat belts there. Really nice, easy to slide across. Definitely get three people across here. You probably even get four across here. We'll check that in a minute. Um, Isofix points, these are the pulley outie covers. They could get lost, they could end up in a child's mouth. Just be careful, because you will end up having to pay out for another set of those, and I bet they're not cheap. Let's jump in, see what it's like to get in and out. Well, <laughs> it's just sheer space, absolute total space. You've got somewhere to hang your coat up there. Always got to have a place to hang your hat and your coat. There's a good one up there. I'm going to pull the door to just a little bit, because even on the door panels, you've got Alcantara on there, you've got the sort of uh, the foo carbon as they like to call it but it's just a nice finish really nice finish um, in the centre here you've got a pull down shelf like that armrest whatever you want to call it it's comfy as well look at that really nice and soft double cup holder there now look at the design of that I know it's a bit you're thinking why waste time showing me a cup holder but someone's put a lot of effort into that because when you put your cup in there because that's up like that it's not going to go shooting forward if you have to suddenly break so therefore you're not going to get scolded see again Skoda thinking outside of the box. Love that. Another thing, ski hatch. Well, if you live in the UK, this is called the B&Q hatch. And if you live elsewhere and you haven't got any ski resorts near you, it's called the local DIY hatch. That's the only way I can describe this. So initially it's, it's, it's for putting your skis or something really long all the way through here. Now you saw how long it was in the boot. Imagine the length of the timber I could get in this car, the length of wood I could get from this car. There you go. Wonderful bit of kit, all pops back up there just like that. I did say we're going to check out how good it is in the middle. Um, yeah, easily, absolutely simple. You get three people across there, three adults across there, no problem at all. Now we get a little bit of a letdown now, and it's such a shame because everything was going so well until I suddenly looked down and went, well, where'd you charge your phone or where'd you, you know, plug any? There's no nothing. They give you an ashtray, an ashtray. Well, that's what it looks like. It probably isn't. It's probably somewhere to put things, but, you know, 12 volt adapter in there. That's it. Nothing else. No USB points. Nowhere to charge up, you know, not even independent heating. And this is the, the uh, trim level from the very top. It's the one below the top. And there's no independent heating, nothing. Skoda, you've let me down. We were going so well. I thought this was going to be incredible. So, not so good if you've got kids of around the teenage nature that need to plug stuff in. You're not going to be able to do that. And the only way they're going to do it is to run leads all the way to the front because there are some bits in the front. But we'll show you that in a minute. Um, you do get some places to put bits and pieces to store. And I've got to say, I mean, the leg room is phenomenal. A couple of courtesy lights up there. Very nice indeed. LEDs, of course. And all in all, yeah, I could so easily just sit here for a few hours. Look at the space in here. Incredible. Right, before I jump in up front, I just want to mention on this particular trim level, the Sportline Plus, you do get the electronic seats with the memory function as well. Really, really nice. Okay, let's jump in. And first of all, seating wise, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Plenty of scope with your steering wheel as well. Even if you're really, really tall, 
you're going to be able to push that right back, move your seat right back as well. There's loads of uh, manoeuvrability, as they say. You've got a three-spoke steering wheel. I really like this steering wheel. It's got a very sporty feel to it as well. On the right-hand side here are your controls on your cockpit section here. You've got a fully digital cockpit on this as well. Really nice indeed. Scroll up and down, lovely sort of knurled finish on the knobs there. Say those, I love the knobs, as you know. Left-hand side here, you've got the Ask Skoda button, and then you've got your media control center and your volume up and down as well. I'll go more into this bit over here when we're out on the road. So watch that section if you're interested in that. Over on the right here is your lighting panel. Again, very simple, just set it to the auto, and then if you do need to put on the fog lights, they're there as well, front and rear. Um, there's a little box here to put knickknacks in and your wallet and stuff, and uh, cards and things like that, parking, you know, car parking bits, perfect for there. You've also, up the top here, got a place to put your shades, got to have a place to put your shades. See, again, this is all that Skoda bit where everything is sort of geared around the driver. So whoever designed this car, what team got together, sat down and they must have gone, you know what, I need one of these, I need one of these, and I need one of those. And they actually did it, rather than say, well, we can't afford one of them. They actually went, no, 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 we'll, we'll do that. We'll put it on there, like the sunglasses thing and the little box down there. It's all simple, but it matters. Keyless entry, keyless ignition, and you do get a lovely little Skoda logo on your, on your key ring there. Double cup holder in the centre there. I'm going to leave the keys in there. There is a little sort of place there to put them, but it does sort of jingle jangle when you're driving along. So I'm just going to throw them in there. Um, decent glove box. Now, this one is chilled. This is a chilled cubby. Can you believe it? It's got a little button there um, and it pumps cold air in there. So you've got cold drinks or whatever, you can put them in there. There's a USB down there as well for charging, which is good. And this is also multi-level as well. So you can set that at whatever. If you want to drive around like that, you can do that as well. Very Volkswagen, darling. Um, beautiful gearbox on this, the DSG, seven speed DSG. I mentioned that earlier. Situated around there, you've got the boot release there as well, which is very nice. So if you don't, you know, if, if you're out shopping, the wife, you know, the partners in the, in the supermarket getting the shopping. You're sitting in here watching YouTube or watching your football, whatever you do. It's pouring with rain. You don't even have to get out. You can just push the button and let her do it all herself. I really love that. I think that's, that's the perfect wife button, that is. Um, you've also got the um, stall button here. You know, that auto stall when you get, you can turn that on and off as well. Above that, you've got the mode button. Now, again, I go into the modes when we're out on the road, but that's your mode button there, just so as you know. Choice of three different screens depends on the level of trim that you go for. So they start with an eight inch screen, then go up to a nine inch screen presented here. Well, it's 9.2 actually. And then you can go to a 10 and a half inch screen and that's on your top level car. Um, but again, you know, the nine inch screen, beautiful TFT touchscreen, very Volkswagen darling, yes again. But we like that, we do like that. I also talk about the cockpit when we're out on the road and show you all the different changes that you can make over here as well. Just wanted to mention that. Glove box wise, push your button there. Look at that, look at that. Look how lovely and slow was that. Should we do that again? I like that. Go on, cameraman, we'll do it one more time. You got that, ready? There she goes, look at that. Beautiful, it's like those kitchens you buy, you know, with the slow touch, I quite like them. Um, it's okay, it's a small manual, it's not too big. It's not like a Bible, is it? It's just uh, reasonable. We'll give, we'll give Skoda the okay on that one. But yet again, you know, I say things like this, that we don't need these anymore. Come on, guys. Most of the time, built within this computer system is your owner's manual. If it isn't on here, then you can go on YouTube or go on the worldwide interweb and, and get the answers to everything you want to know. You know, how to change a fuse, how to light something, whatever you need to know. You're going to find it on there. We don't need this. And to be honest, if you stop making these, we could probably have those spare wheels free of charge rather than charging us for them. There you go. Um, inside here, well, you've got yet again another cooling, a cooling, yeah, we've got a cooling glove box. There's cooling glove boxes everywhere. It's Czechoslovakia, or it's not called Czech, it's Czech Republic. It's Czechia or Czech Republic, a very hot country. Is this why we have to have all these cooling things in there? I don't know, never visited. If you'd like me to go, please let me know and I'd love to come over and have a look at your lovely country. Um, inside here, this is your um, CD changer if you want a CD thing, you know, one of those things is in there and also does all your maps and stuff like that as well. Um, centre here, You've got your heating controls, um, very nice climate control in here. You also come with the air care system, Volkswagen air care system. Again, really nice, got some proper HEPA filters. Oh, he knows his stuff, knows what he's talking about there. Um, yeah, do, do, a, a decent HEPA filter. On this level of trim, you get heated front seats. There's one there and one there, his and hers, or his and his, whichever way you want to go with it. Uh, USB-C on the front here, so inevitably you get your adapter. 
little adapter. One day we won't need these anymore because everything will be USB-Cs and we can just plug them straight in. You also get a 12 volt. There's no wireless charging in this car. I'd have liked to have seen wireless charging. I think that would have just finished this car off. You've got your flappy paddles behind here. You've got your cruise control down here. Get decent cruise control on here as well. And all in all, just look at the finish on this car. It's really, really nice. Excellent. So what we need to do is get it out on the road. It's enough of me waffling on about all the lovely bits in here. Let's get it out, see what it's like, see what it drives like. So here we are out on the road, finally in the Skoda Superb estate. And the first thing you're gonna notice is, wait for it, silence, not a sound. Even with that two liter TDI diesel engine purring away under the bonnet there, I'm not getting any feedback getting a little bit of feedback from the road, from the actual road surface itself. But I figured that's because this car has got the 19 inch alloys on it. They are an extra, but and they do make this car look absolutely stunning. But entry level car gets 17s, and I think that would make quite a bit of difference with your road noise. Peripheral vision and all round vision, simply superb. I know I had to get it in at least once. It is superb though, it's excellent. You've got a very thin pillar here non-obstructive. You've got really nice big mirrors and they're at a perfect angle here as well. I like that. Another thing, you know like the ice scraper and the brolly, the umbrella in the door, um, little items that Skoda do that I think are really neat and one of them on that windscreen, speaking of windscreens, is a parking ticket holder up here um, which Believe it or not, I've actually had a fine where I bought a parking ticket, put it up here. When I shut the door, it blew off and I got, I got fined for non-displaying. So that could save you pounds or wherever you are in the world, whatever currency you use. So I think little neat ideas, the brolly in the door, you know, all of that is great. The finish on this car is absolutely excellent. You've got the Alcantara on this because we are in the Sportline Plus. Sportline Plus itself is one from the top of the range. You've got the Laurent and Clement, or Lauren, however you pronounce it, Lauren and Clement, um, which is the top of the range. That is named after the founders of Skoda. I think that's a really nice idea. It's, it's a lovely, respectful way of doing it. So your top of the range is the Laurent and Clement. Uh, this is the Sportline Plus, it's one below. Entry level here in the UK is the SE. There are five different trim levels. In actual fact, there are six in the world, but five here in the UK. You've got the S line, which is your entry level elsewhere in the world, but here in the UK, it starts with the SE. There you go. Um, Economy-wise, well, to find out bits and pieces on this lovely digital cockpit here, you've got your two buttons over here. So if I push now that button there, that will bring me into the computer mode in the middle here. Now wait for this, because I am truly, truly shocked at the economy on this car and not in a bad way, in a very, very good way. Um, it's just hit 44 to the gallon around town. Seriously, <laughs> it's a two litre TDI engine doing 44 to the gallon. Can you believe that? Absolutely unreal. Out on the road, I think this would easily do 55, possibly even 60 to the gallon if you're on a long run. So again, I hate to say it, simply superb. There you go. <laughs> I keep doing it. I promise not to do it anymore. Well, at least not on this segment anyway. Um, all of that is helped out by the modes. Now, I've currently got this car in the mode buttons down here. You've got four different modes. Um, I'm going to push it back into... So we're in economy at the moment. The economy mode is what is giving me that really good readout. You've got... Next up is your normal mode, as Skoda call it. And then you've got a sport mode. Every time you change modes, the colour in the cockpit here changes as well. So in the economy mode, it's green. Um, and then when you go into the normal mode, it's blue. And then sport mode, you go into this. I'm going to put it in the sport mode because it does look really nice. You go in this really sort of rosy red here and it dictates that you're in the sport mode. I love that. I think it's a really nice little touch and I love the digital cockpit. You can actually change the way this looks as well with the other button on the right here. So you can change the actual layout of this. So you can, I like it where I've got the speedo digital in the middle and the rev counter running around it. There's about five different angles and views that you can put on this. Um, again, it's really, you know, Skoda sort of coming up into, they're using all the power of the Volkswagen group and the synergy and the name and everything to add all these lovely bits. This lovely touch screen here. I know it's very Volkswagen, but at the end of the day, you're paying Skoda prices for a car like this. And on that note, let's have a look and see how much it costs and how much the warranties and the other bits and pieces are with this car. So if I was to tell you, you could buy one of these cars brand new 
for £25,000. That's the entry level car. I think you'd be pretty shocked. That, to me, is total, total value for money. Okay, you know, you can end up spending £42,000 on the top of the range car if you want to, add in all those bits and pieces in that I've mentioned. But at the end of the day, that's your choice. You can buy this car for 25,000. I think it's incredible. Um, you get a three year warranty. The first two years are unlimited mileage. And then the third year is up to 66,000 miles. You get Skoda's roadside assistance. You get a three year paint warranty. And there are a number of different service plans that you can discuss with your Skoda salesperson when you go down for a test drive. The rest of it is totally up to you. Now let's get this car back to the player HQ and give it our final verdict. So there we have it guys. The Skoda superb by name and superb by nature. And in actual fact, I'm gonna make use of that brolly that's in the, uh, the side panel there. Let's pop it out while I give you a final verdict on this wonderful estate car. Um, and it does actually work, look at that, wow. There we go, Skoda Brolly as well. So as I say guys, that was it. That was a week's worth of review and test drive all rolled into about 25 minutes. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it because I definitely enjoyed driving this car. Value for money wise, the actual quality of the product can't fail. You know, get down, get a test drive in one of these because I think you're gonna be very, very surprised and you will enjoy your time in this car. You've been watching me, AJ, on the Player YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as we enjoyed filming this video. Um, don't forget, like, subscribe, and comment. If you've got any comments, leave them in the section down below and one of the team will get back to you in due course. If you want to subscribe, please do so. We'd love you to subscribe. Leave the bell sign unchecked because we put loads of videos up. We're not just a one trick pony here. We do plenty of different things and they're not just cars as well. We do plenty of other things like boats and all sorts of interviews, things like that. Um, one thing I just wanted to mention while we're standing here in the rain, lovely England, we love England for this. Um, don't forget, if you could give us a thumbs up, that would be really helpful. Don't get any uh, extra pay, we don't get any bonuses or anything like that, but what we do, we get a pat on the back from the boss and the sponsors to say, job well done, because if you thumbs up, that means you enjoyed what you were watching. Now, if you do that, I wanna offer you something for free. Yes, really for free. It's a 220 page male, men's, whatever you wanna call it, lifestyle bookazine. Not the real thing, because they cost about 100 UK pounds each, but you can have the online version, 220 pages of everything us guys love. It's called The Player. It's gonna come up here somewhere any minute now. I think it's gonna come in from over there. Um, just go there, it's, it's www.theplayer.co.uk. Go up to the top and press the register button. There's no data capture, just put your name in and your email and you can have a free online version of that and it's got everything in it. It's got tons of stuff in it. There's cars, there's boats, there's holidays, there's golf, there's food, there's wine, there's everything. Just go there, take a good look through that. It's all yours, it's totally, totally free of charge because you watch me, AJ, on the Player YouTube channel. Guys, thanks for watching. Take care. I'll catch you next week with something different.